looks like we've got clear skies for a few nights this is amazing our last three moon periods have been really crap so I'm going to try and take advantage of this I've got my little travel rig out I'm going to be running my two rigs the travel rig and the observatory just setting up tonight to get ready for pole alignment I'm going to be shooting the large Magellanic cloud on my travel rig and a nebula in the Vela area in my observatory my name is Don You're watching my channel Don Astronomy Just getting ready in my observatory now and opening the roof, cooling everything down. Usually it takes about an hour to cool the telescope down. Firing everything up. Um, I'm still shooting an image which is a nebula in the Vela constellation from my previous new moon period I was shooting in. So just testing everything. I have issues with my um, mount sometimes not connecting. Uh, to my, t to my uh, computer and I'm not sure why I have to run it several times sometimes just a communication problem setting my filters I can't remember what filter I'm up to at the moment but uh, there's the image so this is a interesting area looking at um, the Stellarium image that is the area that you could have, you could see on the screen in the observatory that I'm shooting tonight I have the identification on um, Instellarium, but it doesn't give you a lot of, there's no real names to these, but the area in particular is in between the constellation of Vela or Vela and Pupus. And to, give your, to get your bearings, that's the uh, Carina Nebula down here. So I have shot in this area before. Now, just up here, and it's very faint, you may not be able to see it, but I have imaged this before and I'll find, I'll try to find that image and bring it up on the screen. But the area I'm imaging at the moment is just kind of below it. But I've also, um, since making this video, I've been imaging this area as well. So there seems to be a lot of going on and there's a, a lot of nebulosity down here as well. In hindsight, um, had I have known, um, I would have probably been better off to do a mosaic in this area. Maybe one day I will. Uh, but for now though, I will just keep focusing on this area for this session. Pretty much ready now just to uh, start to slew to my target. Um, my routines I slew first, then I'll do a focus routine, focus um, after I've slewed, and then once I'm happy with the focus, I will do a plate sum. And I'm just uh, adjusting the roof now to make sure I've got as much time as possible before I have to come back out and move it. I will automate this very soon. So I'm up and running in the observatory now, I can just focus on my little travel rig. Just connecting now to my little nut computer, which is on the other side of the telescope. And uh, I will connect my mount and then after that I will begin the polar line routine through SharpCap. I have other videos of that routine through SharpCap and Nina in this tablet, um, which you'll find on my uh, YouTube channel. So on my little travel rig, I am going for the Large Magellanic Cloud and it frames up nicely so I'm using the QHY 294C colour camera and my little Skywatcher 50ED which is about 220 millimetres roughly and as you can see it frames out quite nicely so I hope to get plenty of data over the coming nights on this little target. Just finishing off my guiding calibration I'll uh, slew back to my home position now, or my park position, whichever you prefer to call it. And I will start to do uh, my focusing from here. I don't have an electronic focuser, so I have to do everything manually. And um, 
one day I will have a focuser, electronic focuser for this little rig, uh, which will save me a lot of trouble. Okay, focus is pretty much finished and it's time to uh, plate solve. Now, um, that's what I'm plate solving in Nina. You'll see it's uh, pretty similar to what we had there in Stellarium. Um, frames up quite nicely and I'm just adjusting it now. I do like Nina how it tells you how to rotate and what, how many degrees it, you need to rotate the image. So uh, now it's time to get down to business and start taking some sub-exposures. We'll get the lights off and um, now let's take a look. It's uh, a few nights later and these are all the FITS files. Unedited, unstacked, these are straight off camera. These are five minute sub exposures with the duo band filter, hence that's why you can see the uh, hydrogen alpha areas in the image quite nicely. I do like the little ZWA duo band filter. I'm quite happy with this result. What a wonderful four nights um, of astrophotography. It's been amazing. Um, it's not often that we uh, get that. And look who's here. Mrs. Black's come to celebrate. Say hello, everybody. This is Mrs. Black. Hello. Um, it has made me realize though, even though it's been great to get all this data, um, I've been quite tired. I've been up to three and four each night and um, it takes its toll on your body, uh, especially at my age. And I find the, the need for automation even greater now. Um, so in my next series of videos, hopefully two, maybe three, I want to, um, to film that process and, uh, and share what I've done with you guys. So for those who are interested in that, I've started to collect the components. I've nearly got all the things I need to do and uh, I've got a few ideas. And uh, the other thing is um, I want to do some framing and frame some of the work that I've done, um, even if it's just for my own house or maybe to sell, who knows. Uh, so I might do a video on making some frames um, as well for astrophotography. And thanks guys for watching and clear skies.